the 31st commemoration of the 1981 hunger strike. I'd like to first thank you all for joining us this very hot morning. And uh, thank you for coming out and taking your time for this most worthy cause. To begin the program, I would first like to call upon Ray Green to come up and sing both the Irish National Anthem and the American National Anthem. Well, What I just said was, there are any Irish speakers among you, and I know there are a couple. I'm apologizing for my American accent. I got my Irish here. in right in agony and a hung bleeding from the cross. It died in Rome by lion and sword and defiant in cruel array when the deadly word was Spartacus along the Avian way. It marched with the what the toilers bore and frightened lord and king 
and was emblazoned in the deadly stare as e'er a living thing. It smiled in holy innocence before conquest the doors of old, so meek and tame and unaware of the deathly power of gold. It burst forth through pitiful Paris streets and stormed the old Bastille and marched upon the serpent's head and it crushed it neat its heel. It died in blood on buffalo plains and starved by moons of rain. Its heart was buried in wounded knee, but it will come to rise again. It screamed aloud by Kerry Lakes, and it was knelt upon the ground, and it died in great defiance as they coldly shot it down. It is found in every light of hope. It knows no bounds nor space. It has risen in red and black and white, and is there in every race. It lies in the hearts of heroes dead. It screams in tyrant's eyes. It has reached the peak of mountains high. It comes searing across the skies. It lights the dark of the prison cell. It thunders forth its might. It is the undauntable thought, my friend, that though that says, I'm right. Thank you. We will now be reading the Roll of Honor. March 9, 1954 to May 5, 1981. 65 days on hunger strike. Olaf Francis Hughes, Derek. February 28, 1950 to May 12, 1981. 59 days on hunger strike. Olaf Raymond McCreesh, Armagh. February 25, 1957 to May 21, 1981. 61 days on hunger strike. Olaf Patsy O'Hara, Derek. July 11, 1957 to May 21st, 1981. 61 days on hunger strike. Although Joe McDonald, Antrim. September 14th, 1951 to July 8th, 1981. 61 days on hunger strike. Although Martin Hurston, Tyrone. September 13th, 1956 to July 13th, 1981. 46 days on hunger strike. Although Kevin Lynch, Derry. May 25th, 1956 to August 1st, 1981. 71 days on hunger strike. Although Karen Doherty, Antrim. October 16th, 1955 to August 2nd, 1981. 73 days on hunger strike. Although Thomas Mickaway, Derry. November 30th, 1957 to August 8th, 1981. 62 days on hunger strike. Although Michael Mickey Devine, Derry. May 26th, 1954 to August 20th, 1981. 60 days on hunger strike. On this monument, there are two men listed that were not part of the men of 81, but deserve certainly the most of honorable mentions. Frank Stagg, October 4th, 1942 to February 12th, 1976 in Wakefield Prison. Frank Stagg died after fasting for 62 days. In his final message to his comrades in the Republican movement, he wrote, We are a risen people. This time we must not be driven into the gutter. Even if this should mean dying for justice, the fight must go on. I want my memorial to be peace with justice. And Michael Gaughan, October 5th, 1949 to June 3rd, 1974. 23 days into his hunger strike, Michael was force-fed for the first time. The method of force feeding hadn't changed from the days when Thomas Ashe died due to the brutality of it in 1917. The brutality of force feeding took its toll on the hunger strikers. It left them battered and bruised, drained physically and mentally. On June 3rd, 1974, 64 days into his hunger strike, the prison authorities announced that Michael Gordon had died. They later explained that he died from pneumonia, a result of the force feeding tube having pierced his lung and food lodging in his lung. He was 24 years old. I would now like to call Susan Miskell up to talk about her time in McGovern Prison.
Good morning. This past spring, I had the distinct honor of going to Ireland and spending 14 days with an ex-political hostage who had served time in McGaughry and his family. With that being said, I was able to get into the jail on March 6 and visit our political hostages, which are there, I'd like to say, alive and well, but they're alive. They certainly are not well. As of now, the August 12, 2010 agreement has not been fully implemented. Our political hostages are still being beaten. They're living in their own body waste. They're on protest and have been on protest since May 6, 2011, again with the August 12, 2010 agreement not implemented. It's just it's overwhelming to tell you what I had to go through to even get into the prison, and it's extremely difficult to talk about. But my concern are the wives and the children that are left behind, the children that go see their fathers, the children that are verbally abused by the screws or the correction officers, however you want to call them. It's, it, it, it's just it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And if you think that there are no political hostages in McGaughry, Port Leash, Lithuania, Marion Price in Hyde Bank, then you really need to, again, Marion Price was incarcerated in May of 2011 after having a royal pardon. They couldn't find it. They think it's shredded. She's now in the hospital in Belfast, critically ill, pneumonia, depression, after being in solitaire for over a year for simply doing what I'm doing, standing here holding a piece of paper. Martin Corey, Martin Corey went to court about a month ago. He was told when he left court he was getting out of jail. He's still in jail. Can you imagine? He is still in jail after being told he would be free that afternoon at 2.30. So all I can say is please reach out, support our political hostages. If anyone has it in their heart to want to support by writing a note or a letter, see Joseph or myself, we have a list. And, and thank you so much for coming out and listening to us. I would now like to call up Patrick Williams of the National Irish Freedom Committee, to highlight the Martin Corey case. Hello. Uh, Republican Martin Corey is from Lurgan in County Armagh. He was sentenced to life imprisonment in December of 1973 for his involvement in the Republican movement's struggle to free Ireland. At that time, he was only 19 years old. He would spend the next 19 years in jail and would be finally released without signing anything in June of 1992. He returned to his home place in County Armagh where he worked, formed an ongoing relationship, became active in his local common of Republican Sinn Féin, and became a highly respected member of his local community. Without warning, on April 16th of 2010, he was taken back into custody. He has been interned since. No reason was given to Martin at the time or since his return to jail. Earlier this summer, a judge ordered him finally to be released on June 9th because of the fact that he was being held on the basis of secret evidence, evidence so secret that neither he nor his lawyers are allowed to see them, if it exists at all. While Martin was preparing to leave and his family was still waiting outside, Owen Patterson, the British Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, overruled the judge and ordered him to be re-interned. As Martin would tell his local newspaper, the Lurgan Mail, in an interview given last year, I have been in prison for nearly a year and a half, and I still haven't been given a reason. They have put forward a number of allegations against me, and I am not able to defend myself against any of them. They say that I have been seen speaking to known Republicans, or that I have visited a number of houses. What does that matter? It doesn't mean I have done anything wrong. They have absolutely nothing on me, and that's why they haven't charged me. Martin deserves all of our support. The Republican movement has been promoting his case since the beginning. The voices of his support in America has recently gotten louder. At their recent convention, the Ancient Order of Hibernians passed a resolution saying that the Ancient Order of Hibernians in America condemns Owen Patterson for the continued imprisonment of Martin Corey and urges the judge's ruling to be enforced and that he be released immediately on unconditional bail. 
The full statement is available for reading on irishfreedom.net. I encourage all present to please read it and to make your fellow Hibernians who cannot be able to be present here today aware of Martin's plight. It is imperative that Irish America make itself aware that internment still exists in the occupied six counties of Ireland. At the end of the day, Martin is being held hostage by the British government solely because of his political beliefs. All those who believe in justice must support his campaign. For more information regarding Martin's case, please visit releasemartincorry.com or irishfreedom.net. Thank you. I am standing on the threshold of another trembling world. May God have mercy on my soul. With these words, Bobby Sands began the hunger strike that would lead to his death on May 5th, 1981. Good morning, and once again, thank you for joining us at Bobby Sands Circle to commemorate the memory of the 1981 hunger strikers. 2012 marks the 31st anniversary of the martyrdom of these valiant men who selflessly gave the ultimate sacrifice a sacrifice that was made for the unity and freedom of the Irish people. 31 years after the 1981 hunger strike and 14 years after the Good Friday Agreement, the so-called peace agreement, what has changed? Our men and women still face selective internment. Our men and women are still targeted on a daily basis for their political and religious beliefs. Our men and women are still imprisoned under an unjust and foreign system. Era is still divided and the Brits still occupy the island. They think that they have pacified Ireland. They think that they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think that they have foreseen everything. They think that they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our fiend dead. And as long as Ireland holds these graves, Ireland on free shall never be at peace. As hard as they may try, freedom struggle will never be criminalized. The British government, working close with the so-called mainstream Republicans, have perpetuated to the world that everything is fine in Ireland, that the troubles are long over, and the GFA has proven to be the godsend that provisional Sinn Féin promised it all would be. All of which have become untrue. The reality is that the GFA, this so-called peace agreement, has widened the divide and perpetuated an ongoing violence that it promised to stop. We will not be bought or sold. We will keep the flame burning. Their deaths were not in vain. Until there is a complete withdrawal of the occupying British military from Ireland, we will remain unbowed and unbroken. As you leave this place and go on with your lives, remember Bobby Sands and the men of 81. And remember our men and women who struggle in prison today for the ongoing fight that Ireland might be free. With this, I will conclude the ceremony. Shalki Arla, our day will come. <laughs> Folks, thank you everyone for coming. I'd like to invite all of you to join us for a bit of a reception across the street at the Maple Cafe. Brendan, our wonderful host, uh, is welcoming us as well, hopefully. <laughs> And uh, this evening, I would like to invite you all, there's going to be a fundraiser for current Irish Republican prisoners' families at the local public house in Waterbury, 457 West Main Street. The door is at about 7 o'clock. We have Aaron O coming down from Boston, wonderful Irish band. They're going out about 9 o'clock. Thank you very much.